Jake Ludington here at OpenStack Days in Seattle, and I'm here with Swarna Padilla from Avi Networks. And you guys have a load balancing product, I guess, that uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about what that is and how you fit into the OpenStack world. Sure. Um, so we have a software-defined load balancing. Uh, what we realized was that the compute layer is elastic, and the web scale companies have uh, adopted a much more elastic fabric of a layer underneath the compute. They can spin up or spin down the capacity as needed, but whereas the networking layer has not adapted to that kind of requirements or that kind of web scale needs. So what we came up was with a software defined architecture for load balancing, where we separate the data plane from control plane. The control plane sits in a um, separate environment and the data plane, which is the distributed load balancing, they are deployed closest to the applications so that the um, load balancers, when they are in the data path, they collect also. They also collect the real-time telemetry from all these applications. So they collect um, application performance, network performance, uh, traffic performance, and user experience, like how the users are using the applications, all those, all that information, and they feed that real-time telemetry or the metrics into the controller, which then analyzes, process this um, data and enforces policies like, uh, should I auto scale this specific load balancer in this particular environment, or should I spin down the resources now that um, I'm not hitting such uh, traffic capacity or such kind of um, network traffic anymore? Or should I enforce security in this particular um, env environment because um, the load balancers are seeing an anomaly in the traffic or it's an unusual spike and it's not a genuine traffic that's coming in, it's probably a DDoS attack. So how do I segment this or micro-segment this traffic or this particular service so that it's not hit by the DDoS attack? So these kind of the policies are, intelli uh, are intelligently done at the controller level in the control plane. And because uh, the load balancers are distributed, we can also deploy these um, load balancers in any cloud. So for example, if a customer, most of our customers have a hybrid or multi-cloud environment where they have their sometimes dev and test in a public cloud like AWS, um, production or critical environments on bare metal or sometimes a private cloud like, um, like an OpenStack private cloud. So they have these multiple clouds in, um, in their environment. They have these load, they can now deploy these load balancers in these multiple clouds, yet have a single pane of um, glass or single pane of control and management to manage all the applications that are deployed across these multiple clouds. So why then, like say, let's, let's say somebody and in the, the multiple cloud scenario makes a lot of sense, but let's say I have my entire deployment in like AWS, why wouldn't I just use their elastic load balancer in, in that scenario? Um, you could use um, AWS as well, but I haven't seen at least um, a whole lot of deployments that have gone all in in AWS. And even for those that have gone in um, AWS, they also see that the enterprise scale um, functionality, like um, either multi cloud um, traffic shaping or intelligent traffic, uh, traffic management, as we call it, um, uh, not just um, elastically load uh, scaling up their load balancing, but also application resources across multiple clouds, um, and also getting the analytics from all these um, load balancers that have been deployed everywhere, and using that information to then manage the policies, that's uh, definitely something unique that uh, most of our customers have taken advantage of. So getting a lot of that data, I mean, like a, a lot of people are using something like Splunk to say analyze, analyze their data. What's the advantage of using um, your product to do that analysis versus Splunk or any other log analyzer? Um, most of our customers still use Splunk. Um, the one benefit that I see at this personally is that Splunk sits in an offline kind of or uh, offsite kind of path. We are, I mean, load balancers have traditionally sat, um, have use uh, have been in that leverage position where they sit in the data path um, we are um, a traffic proxy is so all the entire traffic is offloaded at the uh, load balancers so we decided why not use that as an advantage to our advantage and use that in the real time process instead of someone like an administrator having to take all these traffic dumps and then plug it into a solution or an analyzer like splunk we can do that kind of analysis in real time Okay, so, so, so the big advantage is then that um, you're actually making that data actionable as traffic is passing through? Exactly, exactly.